Welcome one, welcome all, and welcome back for another dose of Nightmare Fuel. Today I want to talk about the greatest war movie you've likely never heard of. One that deserves to be right up there with Schindler's List and The Pianist for demonstrating the true horrors of war. If you think you can handle it, come and see. This 1985 Russian masterpiece was created by Soviet filmmaker Elam Klimov, and it is without question the greatest work in his collection. This one has been under the radar for far too long, though it is slowly beginning to resurface in popularity, with more and more people learning of its existence. That's what I hope to help try and achieve, because Come and See deserves everyone to come and see it. The film follows a young Belarusian boy named Fliora. At the beginning of the film, he and a friend are digging in the sand of a battlefield to find a rifle, in order to be accepted into the Russian army during World War II. After being warned by an old man, and not to dig, Fleora does anyway and gets his rifle. When he tells his mother his plans of joining the army, she breaks down and hands him an axe and tells him to just kill her and his two sisters there and then, because if he leaves, he's essentially giving them a death sentence anyway. Fleora thankfully doesn't and the army come to collect him, jokingly intimidating the family while they all cry. Fleora, on the other hand has a smile ear to ear, excited to begin his dream as a soldier. Fleora is taken to a nearby camp where he settles in as the new kid. However, on the brink of an oncoming siege, the commander orders Fleora to stay behind while everyone else goes to fight. This deeply saddens him as he is so eager to fight, from his smiling in the house when being collected, to smiling and introducing himself to people in the camp, to smiling during the commander's speech about the siege. However, he is the only one smiling there. Everyone around him is serious and stone-faced. That's a really telling image. Upset, Fleora runs off into the forest to cry. There, he bumps into a young girl who he first saw at the camp. She introduces herself as Rose, though plays mind games with Fleora. She says that her real name is Glasher, and that she lied about her name to prove a point to him to not trust anybody in this world. Fleora and Glasher are interrupted by an airstrike. The blasts temporarily deafen Fleora, and Klimov shows this on screen by having the bombs continuously drop while simulating Fleora's ears ringing. It's super immersive and masterfully executed. I should also say at this point to get it out the way with that this film has one of the best uses of the moving camera I've ever seen and it would not surprise me if Sam Mendes used this as an inspiration when making 1917. It makes you feel like you're in this world following the action yourself firsthand. Truly remarkable filmmaking. Anyway, back to the airstrike. Fleora and Glasher take shelter in one of the bomb craters and eventually make their escape, where they go back to Fleora's house. His family isn't there though, but they settle in and eat some broth. Glasha is thrown off though when she sees a swarm of flies resting on children's toys. Fleora runs around the whole house trying to find his family, but is unsuccessful. He says he thinks he might know where they'll be and heads off there, but while running, Glasha turns her head and sees a huge pile of dead bodies outside Fleora's house. This this is the first shot of the film that lets you know it's not going to be an easy watch. This is just the film warming up though, seriously. Fleora doesn't spot the pile of bodies and Glasher doesn't tell him at first, so Fleora is blindly running to find his family when Glasher and we the audience know exactly where they are. The pair arrive at a thick muddy swamp and Fleora jumps in to wade to the other side, trying to get to an island where he expects the villagers will be hiding. Glasher jumps in to try and help him though, and this sequence goes on for minutes. The swamp is like glue as the pair try their best to clamber through it with all their strength, becoming progressively exhausted when doing so. It's such a brutal scene to watch, and it's such a real experience seeing them both struggle because they actually were struggling in a real swamp. Reaching the other side, a man comes to help them, and that's when Glasha reveals to him that they were all killed in the village, causing Fleora to emotionally crumble in 
front of her. On the island, the old man who warned Fleora not to dig at the start of the film lies dying. He's been set on fire with gasoline and says that he warned Fleora not to dig. This is a moment that completely sinks into Fleora. He dug for a weapon, found one, then because he found one, the Russians picked him up to join the army, the Germans followed the Russians to that area, and the Germans destroyed the village. In this butterfly effect type sequence, if Fleora had never dug for the rifle, the Germans would never have come and killed people. In a sudden moment of realisation, it's as if Fleora believes he is the responsible one for the chaos and bloodshed he sees before him, and it ruins him. If that thought isn't nightmare fuel enough, prepare for some horrendous imagery. On the island, a human skull has been placed onto a post wearing a Nazi uniform. That's pretty creepy enough, but then they start to apply mud like clay to the skull and morph it into a likeness of Hitler, which the villagers then spit on while Fleora has his hair cut down. Imagine that as a thought process. These people hate Hitler so much that they create an almost like statue of him simply just to punish it. Fleora joins a group of soldiers in placing the Hitler scarecrow in the middle of a road, but then the Nazis advance and ultimately everyone becomes separated. After stealing a cow to help try and escape and during an ambush, Fleora is left to his own devices. Even the cow is hit and we see a close up of its frightened, startled eye. When waking up to thick fog, Fleora encounters a farmer. He tries to take the farmer's horse, but a large group of Germans flood the area. Fleora removes all his soldier gear to not be seen as a soldier and stashes it in a pile of hay. Fleora runs off with the farmer and hides with his family. The issue is, his family live in the next village the Nazis are heading towards. This is when the movie cranks up to top gear and doesn't hold back whatsoever. A speakerphone on a truck blares the voice of Hitler through the village and the Nazis force people into a massive wooden barn. Hundreds of people inside, it's just carnage and chaos as the Nazis tease and torture them. Fleora manages to escape through an open window but is grabbed by a Nazi and has his face shoved into the camera. This is the shot right here. Just look at that expression. The wrinkles on his face from the shock and fear, his hair starting to go grey from fright, which was genuine by the way. Due to the subject matter of the film and the realistic nature of the production, including the fact live ammunition was used in the filming and the uniforms worn were mostly originals. That combination meant that the Fleora actor Alexei Shevchenko actually did start to go grey legitimately. If that isn't a mark of nightmare fuel, I don't know what is. Perhaps this next scene is. Because after women are ripped away from their children and they're thrown back into the barn like livestock, the Nazis begin to throw grenades through the windows, then set the barn on fire, then open fire on it. The barn goes up in flames with hundreds of men, women and children screaming in pain before burning to death as the building becomes a husk. This is right up there with the most heartbreaking scenes I've witnessed. It's rough. Like, really rough. It doesn't even feel like a film at this point. It feels like it's happening right in front of you. Fleora is grabbed and has a gun pointed to his head for a photograph, but is spared and passes out in the ash. How's that for an image? When he revives, he heads towards the hair pile where he stashed his equipment. While there, we get another truly horrific sight. Whether it's real or a hallucination, it makes no difference to how impactful it is. Glasha walks towards Fleora her legs spread apart, limping, with blood gushing down her thighs and calves from where she has been brutally gang-raped by the Nazis, pain and torment on her face. Fleora doesn't even go to see if she's alright. He just makes a comment and then walks away. He's desensitised to everything going on and is just broken by the war. What a grim image, man. Fleora regroups with his original Russian soldiers who have captured a group of Nazis, and Fleora's soldiers all is that destroyed, he himself provides the gasoline to set them on fire. However, before the torch hits the gas, the group is gunned down. Zero remorse. Then Klimov decides to show on screen real photographs and video footage from the war of dead bodies or starving people. Then footage of Hitler from the war. We cut back to Fleora who finds a framed picture of Hitler floating in a body of water and he begins to open fire on the picture 
picture. With each shot, we see more real footage of Hitler playing in reverse, going back in time until we see Hitler as a baby. And it's only then Fleora stops firing. What a powerful use of real footage. All of Fleora's anguish and hatred pours out of him one bullet at a time. And this face staring down the rifle is the complete opposite of the happy, enthusiastic face we saw at the start of the film. As Fleora returns to his fellow soldiers to go back into the war, we see a statistic on screen that during the war, 628 Belarusian villages were burnt to the ground. What we've experienced in this film was only a tiny fraction of the reality of history. That is the most terrifying fact of all. Come and See is without question one of the most staggeringly powerful films I've ever seen. I know I've made the comparisons to Schindler's List and The Pianist, which both tackle the persecution of the Jews, but this film goes on a different angle by showing what happened when the Russians and the Germans fought against each other from a Soviet Russian perspective. Every single actor and actress is that good, it does not feel like a movie. The authenticity and naturalistic nature, combined with the use of Steadicam and a lot of POV sequences, make you feel like you're part of the landscape, that you're directly observing something that actually happened. For me, it's one of the scariest films I've seen in terms of demonstrating the darkest side of the deadliest monsters on Earth, the human race. Please watch this. It will change your life. I'm Connor from Unleash the Ghouls, and please join me next time for another edition of Nightmare Fuel. Thank you, and stay safe, everyone. Peace.